Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to look at the Odin X2 four-wheel drive electric skateboard uh, booster system. We're going to take it through its final summary vlog, which we will add up all the different tests I've done and give an overall rating, and we'll see how this comes up out of points out of 30. Sit back and we'll see you guys really soon. <laughs> Here we have it. This is the Onan X2 four-wheel drive um, booster system, and I've put it through its paces and had an incredible uh, review process with this board. Let me say first of all that uh, it's one of the most uh, dynamic electric skateboards I've ridden in terms of power and, and sort of uh, torque. There are a couple of um, copies or uh, cannibalization companies out there, enough boards in the States, uh, Ivory Board, they're pretty much the same thing, but this is the true, uh, you know, tried and true real McCoy, the one that's actually um, uh, come along at the very beginning with the whole, you know, uh, booster system, and you can't really beat the own system. Okay, let's move right along and talk a little bit about this actual booster. First of all, we did the unboxing and the first test. It was really impressive. I absolutely loved it. Uh, this is, um, as you can see now, it's actually, uh, it's pretty heavy. It's 12.7 kilos. Uh, it's a, it weighs a fair bit. Uh, it's not the kind of board you'd sort of be carrying on the bus or the underground. It's not the kind of board you'd be sort of logging around. It's like a motorbike without handlebars or a seat, <laughs> but it is actually a beautiful deck. If you want to drive straight to work, get off uh, and then just keep you know, uh, riding back home and to your front door, up a few steps to your house, that'll work out perfectly. Okay, moving right along, let's talk about the actual speed test, the hill climb test, and first of all, the long range test. The long range test on this got 27 kilometers, so I gave a rating out of 10, um, of 9 uh, 9.6, no, 9.7 out of 10. Uh, it just excelled well, 27 kilometer range, and the wheels, if you look closely under a magnifying glass, They've still got the fine little lines from the molding on the urethanes. I don't know how they do it. Um, the urethanes owner are using are some of the best durometer I've ever seen on any electric skateboard. Uh, there's still the fine lines there from the mold. I've done about probably 400 kilometers on this thing now. So it just seems to be, without a doubt, the most extraordinary pair, uh, you know, you, of urethanes I've ever seen in my life. Okay, moving right, right along. We're talking a bit about the um, the ride itself. We had no problems with the batteries dropping out, no problems with anything in terms of the actual, uh, uh, you know, the actual feel of the skateboard. It was a really nice feel. So yeah, the long range distance test was an exceptionally good result. And with that, we're looking at, yeah, obviously we, we talked about 9.7 out of 10. Okay, we then did the hill climb test. The hill climb test is, is this beast, is this, this monster, this 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 animal in the jungle, and this is where it does its best work. Okay, so we put this into the uh, my hill climb test here in, in my street, and what we basically do is we do the the, the three the three hills. I did the fourth hill with this one, which is hill number four. So um, what I do, if you guys don't know on my channel, I actually not only make the skateboard try and take the hill, but at hill number three, what I actually do is I actually uh, check the speed going uphill number three. Now the original Cool Wheel D3M was 18 kilometers up the speed up the hill three. Uh, the Cool Wheel Coup Board Generation 2 got, uh, I think, t t uh, 19 kilometers up the hill. Um, then we had the, oh, maybe I think 20 kilometers up that hill speed. Then we did the actual, uh, the real board did 20, 21 kilometers up that hill three. And then the record held until this came along was the land wheel and that did um, 22 kilometers speed up hill number three. Remember it's a 22% gradient. Uh, it's very important to understand the gradient uh, opposed to degrees on the iPhone. You've got to make sure you get this right, guys, if you're reviewing it. Uh, a lot of guys are getting it completely wrong. Some guy in Melbourne just did a review on a 20, I think a 40% 40, 40 grade, no, 40, 22 degree grade, which is totally incorrect. That's like 44%. So this hill is 22%. Uh, grade um, and this got the record at 29 kilometers per hour 29 kilometers some skateboards don't even go 29 kilometers per hour this did it up the hill so with the hill climb test what I got with that one is a rating of 9.8 out of 10 so that was the highest rating I've ever given 
uh, a skateboard in any category, okay, of any category in any area. So 9.8 is a virtually perfect score, pretty much. Okay, left the last test, which is a speed and sprint test. And I'm showing footage of these as I'm talking in the corner here. You'll see that some of the footage from the day's uh, shooting. Now, what I'm doing today is adding them all up. So we're doing the 10 out of 10 for the speed, out of 10 hill time, and out of 10 for the long distance. Add them together, divide by whatever, and we're going to get a figure of out of 30. So um, the the speed test, uh, we got a speed of 36 kilometers per hour. So it's 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 fast. It's fast enough. I don't think you need to go much faster on an on electric skateboard. Guys, if you're going over 35 kilometers per hour, you can't run off a skateboard when you fall off. You're gonna roll, you're gonna, you're gonna tumble. So when you get to 35 kilometers an hour, you pretty much, I said yes. it's as fast as you wanna go unless you wanna roll when you're getting off that board or tumble. So to me, that's the benchmark of where you then go, well, it's fight or flight, and from 35 up to 45 or 50 kilometers an hour, that's where, you know, you don't necessarily have to go that far. So what does it do? 36 kilometers per hour. I was pretty happy with that. That's a really good speed on that one. Um, you know, you can unclock this. Now the land wheel is exactly the same wattage and that gets uh, 41. I've got the record ever on the most fastest production electric skateboard I've reviewed so far in the land wheel generation five. Uh, L3X, I did 41 kilometers per hour, adjusted for the time clock difference on the satellite, probably 43 kilometers per hour. This will do that, but you have to ask Onan to unclock the safety speed on it. Now, personally, I didn't. I'm leaving it at 36, it's fine. You get better mileage, but uh, essentially you can do that. So it's something worth thinking about. Uh, now, um, that, was a, that was the speed test. So I gave it 9.6 out of 10. So with 9.6 out of 10, 9.7 out of 10 for the uh, long range, and 9.8 out of 10 for the um, hill climb test, we got total points, as you can see, of 29.1 points out of 30. That's an astounding result. 29.1 out of 30 is an incredible result for an electric skateboard. And what I'm doing here, guys, is the final summary review rating. So those that don't want to watch the individual tests can come straight here and watch the overall summary and get an idea on what uh, what the overall feeling is. Right, so. People are not watching or looking at the owner much. Maybe it's the battery situation you're concerned about that you know it, they, they come out or click up. They're locking in beautifully. Look at my rubber, rubber band hack where I put a rubber band around the battery. And by doing that, you basically, um, I'll just take it out and show you. Um, so with the, the battery, you've got to uh, make sure it's a snug fit. It's really important this thing goes in tight. So there's four foam pieces you've got to put in. It comes in the, the battery. This is plastic and this is metal, it doesn't work. So after a while rattling, you're gonna get loose batteries, they're gonna fall out. Maybe that's the original feedback, people we weren't happy with the batteries falling out, they've owned and fixed all that. But if you put the four foam pieces and you put elastic band around here, you get from Officeworks and you snap it in, it has to go in tight so it clicks at the last minute, that's what you want in the batteries. Okay, technically under the bonnet, let's talk about the uh, S controller. The original Onan had a, um, uh, a, a, the early day rudimentary type remote control um, speed controller, which was a censored hall system. It had a limiter override controller for the actual motor. So when the battery got really low and you're going up a hill and you got to one bar on your um, on your own, and what would happen is it would limit the power to the, to the motors and it would throw you because it would just stop the motors from being damaged from a low battery. That was old style, now they move forward to an FOC, that's a field orienta orientation control mechanism. It's sensorless, it's one of the best S in the market, and these have been synchronized so brilliantly, it's better than what the ivory or the, or the nut, or better than what even the, the latest, you know, sort of like uh, Meepo coming out. This is another level, okay? This is synchronized incredibly. So. That's another good aspect. You've got a whole new controller, a whole new S. It's just top of the range, so that's a positive. So, you know, it's nothing like the original Onans, and this is an incredible electric skateboard. And I'm telling you now, um, if you want a beast, if you want something that really, you know, is going to, um, you know, come across not only performance wise, but with power, um, we're talking 4,400 watts of total power here. We're talking, um, what, six horsepower? It's just insane, okay? Now, let's talk about the pros and the cons of the board. So we know the overall rating, 29.1. Let's talk about the pros. First of all, the pros is 
It's got plenty of torque. It's got plenty of bite. You saw the pre uh, video of me taking on the Carbon Evolve with um, upper heel at 18%. Uh, this actually kept the whole way and actually started catching the Evolve Carbon GT. So this is as fast as a Carbon GT on a hill. In fact, had more grunt. When you get to some serious hills, this will actually outdo uh, it because it's got 4,400 watts, opposed to the you know, 3,000 watts of the, of the uh, Evolve. Um, it's got plenty of nice performance feel with four wheels turning. If you're going to be riding on any sort of slippery surface or it's going to be wet, this thing will, all four wheels will pull and you'll feel that. You'll feel that, that, that four wheel drive kind of feel when you're riding it. You just definitely get that straight away when you ride it. Okay, pros are two batteries long distance. Now what you can do with this thing is pop this battery out, put it in your backpack and use the back battery, ride around, you come to a hill in San Francisco and you want to make it, you click the battery in the front, bang, you've got four wheel drive, you'll take that hill. The other side of the hill, you take the battery back out again, put your backpack and you keep riding. When that battery dies, you put that in your backpack and put the new battery in here and you get another 28 kilometers. You probably technically get 40 kilometer range by using one battery only and when this battery is out although it's in your backpack you've still got the overall weight on the board so from a science point of view you've still yeah, yeah you've still got the same weight but the board hasn't got the weight on it while you're riding so you can just play with that it's a very clever way of doing it the other positive thing about it you can order this and you can get a another set of front trucks i recommend the seismic trucks the 30 degree or the 45 degree seismic spring trucks look them up there'll be a link below put them on the front so you keep one for yourself with the original owning, uh, you know, uh, sort of uh, trucks if you've got them. If not, you buy the seismic two trucks and you can split that into two skateboards. Okay, it comes with two remotes, so it actually is two skateboards. Look at the uh, the new decks coming out of the states. I'll put some links below that go with them. You can then have this deck comes with it. So essentially, for nine hundred ninety US dollars, you're going to get. <laughs> you're gonna get as I sold these things are uh, you're gonna get actually two skateboards for price of one right two skateboards um, and uh, you'll have no problem batteries are there on this one I haven't actually charged this uh, so um, yeah that's the other benefit of having this skateboard you get two for the price of one and you get a set of trucks front trucks for like 60 bucks and you've got yourself two skateboards okay the other positive thing is the urethane is incredibly incredibly uh look it's still got the fine lines on here i'll get a close up in a second you'll see here of this is after 400 kilometers and they've still got the fine mold lines in them like the little string lines it's just they're incredible uh also, the braking is incredibly powerful on any hill, even down to a you know a, a thirty percent uh, hill, you'll have no problem pulling up on any sort of uh, weight you're on. Uh, right, positive uh, other positives. It um, it's got uh, what else has it got? Um, nice deck. The decks a stiff, powerful deck. I come from a surfing background. I like a strong deck, a powerful. Deck. I don't want any bouncy flex decks. I had those the Bain skateboards in nineteen seventy three with a fiberglass. I like a sturdy, solid piece of real estate under me when I'm riding. I don't want to have anything that's going to be bouncing around, and that comes from my surfing background on a surfboard. I like to keep you know, that feel of, of power and strength under me rather than bouncy flex feel. Um, and that's about summing up the positivities on the owner in terms of, uh, the, of the thumbs up. Let's look at some thumbs down. What are we looking at here that are concerns? Well, it's 12.9 kilos. It's going to be a heavy thing to carry around. You won't be able to get on the subway with it without, you know, it's, it's a pretty big beast to carry around. Uh, the battery packs aren't airline friendly. They're actually 154 watt hour, 160 watt hour batteries. You're going to need to uh, check them in beforehand by getting authority. The, F the FCA and the T TSA allow batteries up to 100 watt hours to just carry on no problem in hand luggage. You're going to have up to five individual sachets under 100 watt hour batteries. But when you get to 160 watt hours, 159, you need to get prior permission from the airline. But generally, nine out of 10 times, you'll get that permission. So you can take these two through. So airline friendly, sort of kind of. Um, what else is that negative? Um, the thing about this thing is it's, uh, um, the, look, to be honest, there's not many negatives with it. I think that's pretty much summing up. The bushings are good. The carving is really good. That's another positive. It just carves so beautifully. You've got beautiful bushings in here. So um, warnings, do I have any um, warnings on it? Look, only make sure you put the the foam piece in the battery. Make sure these batteries click in tight. They've got to click in tight to you. Virtually hear a click, light, light click. They can't just lock in. They're gonna, they're gonna rattle. So the foam pieces and rubber bands. Um, 
it's one of the best electric skateboards you'll get in terms of power, torque, there's nothing will touch it. It is, it is the original and the best Onan X2 four wheel drive. So, um, you know, this is, uh, it's, it's a good looking unit as you can see. It's a nice looking unit. Um, it's one of these, uh, one of these boards that just will turn heads. I recommend definitely doing the foam inside as I've showed you before, uh, between the actual um, the booster six millimeter closed cell foam, you'll get that from uh, Bunnings and or not Bunnings, you get it from Clark Rubber in Sydney. Uh, online, you can get Clark Rubber anywhere in Australia. Or just look for a shop that has uh, this kind of um, urethane stuff. So um, yeah, so basically that's um, that's the the Onyx Two in terms of what you're going to get with the actual uh, the board, right? Now. Um, Sorry, my camera was moving around a bit, so it's trying to find the actual thing I did on the front here. Okay, so let's go try and find, there we go. I think it's found it now, okay. Right, we're back. Um, <laughs> so uh, in summing up, who do I recommend this board uh, for? Okay, a rider that really is a heavy rider, a guy that's probably around about possibly 95 kilos and greater, or up to 120 kilos. 130 kilos, you'd need this board. Uh, I weigh 94, it takes me like a feather. I, I, I think it's more geared for a, the older, heavier guy, if you want, or uh, if you want, um, that's the first point. A rider that also uh, is a big guy, can carry it. Um, obviously, I wouldn't recommend it for a, for a woman, or for a girl, it's, it's just a little bit heavy. Um, also, someone who really has a lot of hills. If you live in San Francisco, or if you live in Brazil, near the hilly area, this is the board for you for hills, okay? So that's the kind of rider. The deck has got a beautiful deck on this. It's um, it's just, um, it's got the lovely, typical sort of land yacht um, feel about it. It's got the kinks in here, which you can get your, you can get your foot in. You have got a beautiful W, w concave on the deck, um, as you can see on there. Um, so it's, 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 it's an awesome deck. It's a maple deck, not a bamboo flex deck. I like the stiffness, as I said before. I think it's a really nice look. Um, so, yeah, so essentially the rider, it's somewhat experienced, more of an advanced rider. Um, so I think at the end of the day, it's one of those boards that will require uh, no, there's, there's three speeds, so you don't have to worry too much about uh, if you're not an experienced rider, go on low speed. Uh, oh, sorry, there's, there's two speeds on this. Sorry, I'm getting a bit confused. Um, yeah, two speeds on this, which means that the low speed will be better for you if you're learning. Um, so in summing up, guys, the Onan X2 is an extraordinary piece of technology. It's, it's a cutting edge four-wheel drive electric skateboard. I know there's a lot out there, like the Quattro, Acton, the Jed boards. There's also Meepo's board out of four-wheel drive. We're talking about the, uh, the Ivory board, but this is the original and I think the best. And I think uh, the motors on these are beautiful big motors. As I said before, it's got the uh, you know, slide off urethane, the urethanes come off very easy and slide straight back on. It's the easiest urethane change on any electric skateboard I've ever ridden. Uh, so all in all guys, I will thank you for watching today. You've been watching Andrew Penman, eBoard Reviews YouTube. This is the final summary video on the Onan X2 four wheel drive and I can thoroughly recommend it. Uh, and it's uh, priced around $990 US. Uh, the links below will take you to Onan itself where you can deal with uh, my contact, uh, Queenie Liang. She is absolutely brilliant. Uh, she'll organize all the shipping. This is a professional company. They've been doing scooters. They've been doing hoverboards for, for 10 years. It's a massive company in China and they make a very high quality. The magnets on this are really solid. Uh, yeah, it's it's great. So guys, till next time, uh, this is Andrew Cowan mm -hmm. signing off. Happy skating, safe skating. We'll see you in the next vlog for the next final summary review, which will be on the Vareal board, and then we'll be doing the final summary on the land wheel. Happy skating, safe skating. We'll see you in the next vlog. Thanks, guys.